Hey, what's going on everybody? Well, welcome back to another video here on the Christopher Scott channel. And if you happen to be new, welcome. We are so glad you decided to come by and check us out. And for everybody else that's been around for a while, thank you for coming back. We are truly grateful for every single one of you. We totally love the support guys. Thank you so very much. But before we get into this video today, I have to first give special thanks to today's video sponsor, Backyard Farms and the original Hatchmate automatic egg incubator. Now, you're probably thinking, if you know what we do around here, hey Chris, how are you gonna use an egg incubator to hatch a fish egg? Or, I didn't realize hamsters hatched out of eggs. You know, things like that. Well, we're not gonna be focused on fish or hamsters or reptiles or any of the sort today. And I need to give you a little bit of backstory here. So, as you know, I like to keep fish and I like to keep things inside of glass cubes. Fill them with water, put plants, rocks, wood, all kinds of stuff in there. Make really cool things. I also like to make really cool terrariums, things like that. But I'm sitting around and I was thinking, what other kind of animals can we put inside of a glass cube that will survive thrive and be really super cool and different and it got me researching so i'm flipping through the internet researching what could i possibly buy that could go inside of an aquarium that is not really aquarium related and it got me going the next thing you know i'm in this dark rabbit hole of different types of animals and i come across these cute amazing little creatures that you can see right here the button quail and the button quail is an amazing little bird so you can put four or five of these things inside of a 40 gallon breeder with some standard you know bedding like you put with hamsters as an example put a water dish feed things like that keep them safe and warm and these things will survive and they will thrive. So that's how we got into this today. And I just wanted to give you that little backstory. So thanks for listening to that. Back to today's sponsor. So Backyard Farms and the original Hatchmate, they were kind enough to send us their product for our review as well as use in hatching these beautiful little button quail eggs. And in talking about button quail, it's gonna take 17 days to hatch these little guys. So we are looking today, right now, as day number one. It is August the 23rd, and I know you're not seeing this on August the 23rd, but today is August the 23rd, day number one. And what we're gonna be doing in this section of the video today so we're going to be setting up this hatch mate. We are going to be placing our eggs into this incubator and then we will check back days 2 through 17 on the progress of hatching these eggs and then at the end we'll release this video which is what you're seeing right now and hopefully we got some baby button quails that have hatched and we are playing with. So that's my, I, I'm predicting the future here guys. I'm predicting the future. So, stay with me. Let's get this box open here and get this thing out. Let's see what all we got. We got us an owner's manual. I'm assuming I'm gonna need that, so we're gonna set that to the side. Looks like we got us a egg turning tray. Couple of grates. That's nice, that's real nice. Looks like the top and a tray. What else is, oh, oh, there's something else in here. Oh, look at that. We also have us a thermometer and hygrometer. And what is a hygrometer? Hygrometer actually measures relative humidity, which is very important in incubating and hatching eggs. Hygrometers are also very important in a lot of different things. I have a hygrometer in Gerald's enclosure. I have a hygrometer in the other snake's enclosure that you guys may have not seen yet. I don't know, because this is the 23rd. I may have that video out by this time. I may not, but there's another snake in the room. So. Hygrometers are very, very important. I also keep a hygrometer in the fish room itself just simply to measure the relative humidity to keep it down because of all the water in here. And in fact, as you see on this right here, it's currently 83% relative humidity in this room, which is a little high. I need to turn on my dehumidifier. So very, very important. And it was nice that they sent one of these. However, we're gonna be using a different kind as well in, in conjunction with this one. Now setting this thing up is pretty simple. I mean, it's a very, very simple task. We're gonna take this little grate right here that has the feet on it and that's gonna sit down inside 
of this tub right here. And why that is, is because you want a little gap here. Because you're going to fill this thing with up to three and a half, no more than three and a half ounces of water. And that three and a half ounces of water is what's going to provide the relative humidity inside of this tub to maintain the proper humidity. Now, every single egg is a little different on temperature and humidity. The button quail egg is going to be right around 50% humidity at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then about the last three days, you're going to up that humidity a little bit. And you're going to drop that temperature a little bit and run it for the last three days. So we'll talk about that later on as we get through all of this stuff. But we got our first little tray inside of here, which is going to allow us, as you can see, to put a little bit of water in the bottom. Not sure exactly how much water we're going to need, but we need to figure that out. The next tray, as you see here, we got some rails on the side. These rails are guides. And those guides are actually for this egg turner right here. So you want these inside of here. And we're going to basically drop this inside of here with the rails upright. And it's going to sit on this little lip, giving us another little space between the two grates. Now we know that that's good. Now as far as the egg turner goes, whoa, whoa. As far as the egg turner goes, the pit. As far as the egg turner goes, depending on the type of eggs you're trying to hatch, which hopefully you're trying to hatch button quail as well, maybe, you know, I don't know. But depending on what size eggs you're trying, that's how much space you're going to put between these little dividers. They come out, you can adjust those. Now, I don't know what size these eggs are yet because we have just gotten them in the mail and we haven't opened them yet, but we're going to unbox those here in just a little bit. Now, this egg turner is going to sit right down inside of this tray between these two rails so it can actually move back and forth. The way it moves back and forth is this little mechanism inside of the top of this egg incubator. It slowly turns and it does not turn it very fast. You're not going to be able to see this thing rocking back and forth with the naked eye. It's over time. If you were to set your camera up on it, run a time lapse, yeah, you could go back and you could see it rock back and forth, but just looking at it, don't think it's going to sit there and turn the egg. It's, that's not the way egg turning works. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this little mechanism right here, this little pole that's coming off of this little roundy thing here, and we're going to make sure that it fits right down inside of this slot right there. And if we get it right, we should be able to move this top back and forth and see the tray go back and forth, which is correct. Then you're going to set the top right on top of that, and we have completely set this thing up. Now we do need to go ahead and plug this thing in, and I will be honest with you guys. I had already gone ahead and pulled this thing out, figured out how to do it and set it up just so we didn't have to struggle through that together in case it was difficult. But I will tell you, this product is very easy to set up. One of the things that you need to do is plug this thing in, set this thing to a certain temperature and let it run for about mm, two to four hours and check the, the temperature gauge on it to make sure that it is calibrated. There are instructions inside of this booklet here to how to calibrate it. I had to calibrate mine about 1.3 degrees Fahrenheit to get this thing perfect. I let it run for hours and it all worked out. We figured it out. Everything's good. So with that, we are now set up with our egg incubator and all we need to do now is go ahead and unbox these beautiful little button quail eggs. Now that we got this set up, we want to go ahead and set up our hygrometer that's going to be used in this particular container. Now what we're going to be using for our thermometer and hygrometer is a Wi-Fi base that allows me to monitor this from anywhere and that's just simply because we're not always at home. So we want to make sure that we keep an eye on these. So now that we have this sitting where we need to sit it, we're going to go ahead and add water to the bottom. Now, like I said earlier, you should not add any more than three and a half ounces, which is about a hundred milliliters of water. Because my humidity is higher in my house because of all my fish tanks, we're going to add about half of that to start, a little less than half. So that there is about 45 milliliters of water, which is not a whole lot of water, as you can see. So you just let this sit in the bottom just like that. And then what we'll do is once again, we're going to drop our tray with the feet in here that protects everything above this from the water itself, followed by our egg turning tray. We need to open up these eggs and get these things in here. While we're doing that, number one is I'm going to take my hygrometer and I'm going to place this on the end down here because this tray can't go any further than right there, which means it's not going to hit my hygrometer. So we're going to go ahead and drop our top on this. And once again, you want to make sure you get this post into your tray and just drop the top on it. There is a hole here for ventilation, which is good. And now we're just going to plug this thing in. I'm also going to go ahead and add the other hygrometer in here too, just 
poor visibility. I'll show you why here in just a minute. I wanna see how accurate the one that came with it is. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this thing in. We have lights. We have lights. We want to set this to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So 100 degrees Fahrenheit is about 37.778 degrees Celsius. So we want to go ahead and set this to 37.8. So as this warms up, we're going to go ahead and scoot this to the back here. And we want to go ahead and look at our eggs. Now I ordered these eggs from a breeder in Louisiana. He has a poultry certification. And from all the reviews I read, he does a really good job at getting these eggs to you safely. And as we can see, these things are packed really, really nicely. So let's see oh, what we got here. All right, here we go. Got a bunch of shavings, look like Aspen shavings maybe. I'm gonna brush all those off. And what we have here is an assortment of button quail eggs. I mean, you look at the size of these things. Look at this. That's how, that's how big that little baby chick's gonna be when it hatches. We're gonna go ahead and open this top. It's gonna release all the humidity and all the heat, but we wanna get these trays to the right level. Perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start lining this tray with these eggs. We actually have about 15 of them. One of them is damaged, unfortunately. All right, well, we have our eggs in the incubator and it is now time to close this thing up. So we are now good to go. All right, guys, well, day one of our adventure of hatching button quail eggs is over. Button quail should hatch after 17 days, not 16, not 18, but at 17 days. That can be prolonged if your humidity is not correct or your temperature is not correct. That's why we are using so many different methods of monitoring this to make sure that we get a good hatch at 17 days. Hatch rate for male shipped eggs is usually about 60%. However, we're gonna go for 100%. So let's see how this goes. 16 paranoia filled days later. <gasps> oh my goodness, look at that, we have a baby. Oh my gosh, guys, do you see that? We have our first button quail egg that has hatched. Look at how adorable that thing is. So cute. We have a couple more that are cracked and are gonna be hatching soon. So we're gonna keep checking back in throughout this through the day, but look at how cute it is. All right, let's cover it back up so it doesn't get cold. All right, come on, it's the first one born. What's its name? You guys have to comment below. Let me know what we're gonna call this very first button quail that is hatched. <laughs> All right, guys, well, let's feed this hungry arowana. I mean, this dude, he's about, he will take my finger off. I would put my finger in there, but he will draw blood and he draws blood every time. He got Max the other day, took almost all the skin off of his knuckle, and I'm not gonna do that. But we got this dude who's super hungry. We got old Gobi McTwire down there that's super hungry. We got the Jack Dempsey that's super hungry. The other fish, I don't know where they're at, they're up back around there and stuff, but we'll draw them out with what we're about to feed them. And what are we gonna feed them? Well, we're definitely not feeding them our button quail. Yes, I know that's what was in the thumbnail, is a depiction of me feeding these button quail to these, but did you see how cute they are? Somebody actually recommended that I should raise them, hatch them, and just do nothing but feed them to my predator fish. And I'm sorry, but that's not gonna happen. That will never happen. I don't, I don't, I, I mean, listen, in the wild, arowana will jump out of the water and grab birds out of the sky, but I'm not feeding my birds to my arowana. Nope. He gets frozen shrimp. That's what he's gonna get fed. So let's go ahead and get these guys fed real quick. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Whoa, whoa, you better settle down there. Look, oh, there's the feather fin catfish. He's he's wanting some too. Oh, you know what? Let's get let's get old Gobi McTwire. Well, here comes Arowana again. Ready? Come on, Gobi. Come on. And the Arowana took it. What a what a punk. There you go. Oh, oh, whoa. Hey man, you need to settle down. I'm gonna give you some. You just bit him on the face. You bit him on the face. No biting, dude, no biting. Goodness gracious. You are a greedy freaking thing, aren't you? You bite me and I'm gonna bite you back. Cause you will be delicious. 
on a taco. <laughs> Gobi McGuire's like, I am not going for any more. This stinking arowana bit me on the face. All right, dude. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that. Get some more back here for old Gobi McTwire, and he got him some more. Good job, Gobi McTwire. Give you some more. I think you need maybe some more. Oh, 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 you just spit it out. All right, well, I'll hold on for you. You can get some. Feather fin will get it. Maybe this pleco right here has got his tail sticking out. Well, that is all the scrimp I have. That is all the shrimp. Yeah, you better get out of here. That is all the shrimp I have for you guys. I would never, ever, ever, ever feed my little button quail to the arowana. Never in a million years would I ever do that. So, with that, let's get back to this video. Two hours later. All right, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and check to see if we have any more babies in here. Oh, <gasps> we have another one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, we now have two. And that one right there is moving. That means that that one's about to hatch. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at how cute they are. Look at that. Well, Max Robert hasn't looked in this box yet. They're so small. <laughs> there are three of them in there. You think we'll get any more? There's more eggs in there, so probably, yeah. Maybe. How many eggs are there? All right, well, we're gonna take a look and see how many eggs we have hatched so far. And if you look right in here, we have a total of three that have hatched, and we have a fourth one right over there that's hatching right now. So these things are looking fantastic. So what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and get these into the brooder box. All right, guys, well, we have the brooder box completely set up. Everything is good to go. So now it's just a matter of moving these chicks into this box. So if you look, these guys are ready to go. Look at this. one of them and there's two my hands are very clean guys and there's three of them look oh they're so sweet well let's get them into their box look at these things they're so cute do you see this oh my gosh absolutely adorable well, let's get these guys into their brooder box here. All right, well, it's time for these little button quail to upgrade their enclosure a little bit because they are now a week old. So what we've done is we've removed the mat. We got our little button quail over here. Look at them in there. We got the top on this because, you know, well, we are outside and here in Texas, we got osprey, hawks, you know, all that kind of stuff. Foxes, lots of things that would eat these little things. So we don't want to mess with that. And we have a five gallon bucket here of some aspen shavings. And really what we need to do first is just clean out all the poop in the bottom of this thing. These things poop like crazy. So that's all I'm going to start with is just coming in here and wiping away all this poop. And then we'll come back in and properly clean it. So as far as this mat goes, there's no point in reusing this thing. I guess technically I could wash this thing and keep it for the next ones. Oh, wait a minute. Are we going to have next ones? Should we hatch button quail again? Let me know guys. What do you think? I may wash this off and just keep it for the next one. And we'll go ahead and use this same brooder box for the next set. You just let me know in the comments whether you think we should go ahead and hatch these things again. So now that this thing is cleaned out, we're just going to dump some of these aspen shavings in here. And really, aspen shavings are good and fluffy. This may be a little bit too much. Just a base layer of aspen shavings. It'll help keep them warm. It'll also help with the poop cleanup and things like that. And just as simple as that, putting those things in there like that. And then coming over here and looking at all the poop that they have already dropped in this thing. Like, you guys poop more than anything I've ever seen. And there they are. And if you notice, they're starting to get their actual feathers in. What I need to know is, what do we name these guys? I mean, look at how cute they are. They're so cute. All right, so let's get this box back inside get them under some heat and get their water and food set back up. All right, well, what we're gonna start with, we need to go ahead and get their water back in here. So we're gonna set that right over here. 
So as we're setting up their food here, let's talk about these little guys. So one of the things is if you don't have access to Aspen shavings, you can always use newspaper and paper towels and all kinds of different things. Plenty of websites to do research on. There's quite a few YouTube videos as well. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the feed that I give them and I'm crunching it up and putting it into this bowl because they're still pretty small so they can't fully eat these big pieces. If you notice these pieces are kind of big so we want to crunch those up and get them more of a kind of a powdery form. So we're gonna put some of that in there and then we're also gonna scatter feed because they will forage for their food and they are ground feeders. So we'll put some of this all around into their enclosure as well. All right, these guys are set back up. They have a little food dish here. We also scatter fed them throughout. We got our water dish here. They are straight chilling back there, staying warm. Let's go ahead and add our thermometer back in, which also tells us our relative humidity. We want that to stay right around 90 degrees at this point. And what we're gonna do is over the next four to five weeks, we are gonna slowly reduce the heat to room temperature. And you wanna do that by about five degrees a week. So we'll be good here in about four or five weeks, but these things are doing fantastic. Everybody looks healthy and happy and all and we're gonna go ahead and get the top back on this thing so for anybody that's ever thought about hatching chickens or anything like that i don't know if you have room for chickens but if you don't these button quail are absolutely amazing it is such a cool process to watch these things go into the incubator and to actually come out and hatch i mean such a cool process and they're such cool tiny little creatures that are super sweet and very very highly recommend anybody that's ever thought about this to go ahead and do it pull the trigger now find a link in the description for this incubator they're fairly inexpensive all in all maybe 120 dollars total cost to get started with this and then once you have everything it's just a matter of buying more eggs definitely recommend it but more videos will be coming on these guys soon as they continue to grow i'll give you updates on them in each video because they will be changing daily going forward like I said, you can already start to see their actual feathers coming in on their bodies, which is great. And from what I read, these things will actually learn how to fly within just an, another week or so. I'll also have an update coming because this is not going to be their permanent structure. They will in fact go into a permanent home. This is just the brooder box until we can get them weaned off of the heat lamp and down to room temperature, at which point we can then put them into some sort of an enclosure. So stay tuned for that video coming up soon. All right, let's talk about feed for a second. So what we're feeding is this Purina Game Bird Starter Feed. And what these are, are, are little granules. Now you want to start with at least 25 to 30 percent protein starter feed which is what this is. I picked this up at Tractor Supply. It was maybe like ten dollars for this whole bag and they honestly will not eat this entire bag in their entire lives more than likely because they stay pretty small and once they get old enough you're actually going to start feeding them an array of fruits and vegetables and things of that nature as well as the feed. So they probably will never go through this entire bag. But the granules that are actually in the bag are a little large. So when they are first hatched, what you want to do, or at least how I did it, is I just dropped some into a food processor, ground it up into a fine powder, and put the powder in there, and they were able to get through it. The other thing you can do is actually mix it with a little bit of warm water and mush it up really good and feed it to them like that. And they did really well with that as well, tried both. But they seem to like the powder a little better. You want to make sure that they always have enough water in their enclosure because they do drink a lot, as well as you want to make sure that they cannot fall into their water dish and drown. If you notice, I had that little jar lid and I started with that the first few days and then I moved to the larger waterer. And that particular waterer is actually made specifically for quail. You can buy that at Tractor Supply. They were like $4 or something like that. But the bowl is actually very narrow and very shallow so the chick can't actually fall in but i still went ahead and put rocks in it the first few days just to make sure that they didn't fall in and actually drown once again though super easy super fun little project we really enjoyed hatching these things but what i need from you guys is i need you to comment below and let me know we have four of them what should we name these i mean these things are going to be here Hey Johnny, 
These things are going to be here for a while. They're going to be on the channel. They are absolutely amazing and we can keep them even in a bin container like that, an aquarium, something of that nature. We can keep them in all different small things. We're going to put them into, now granted when spring hits they'll have an outdoor area that they'll be able to go to, but right now we're going out of you know, summer into fall, it's gonna be a little cooler. And until it gets too cold, they'll be able to come outside as well. So we're gonna get something built for them to actually go into to be able to enjoy the sunshine and the outdoors. They are flight birds, so they will fly. So more than likely, we're gonna build them some sort of a flight cage as well that they'll be able to get into and fly around and spread their wings, those kinds of things. We will come back at a later time and do another video once they are a little older about enrichment and what they need for enrichment in their enclosure. We'll do all that stuff in an upcoming video, but for right now, make sure you let me know in the comments, first off, what you think about these things. Next, what should we name them? And finally, should we go ahead and hatch some more? So let me know in the comments below. All right, guys, well, we're here, it is currently September the 17th, which is the day I'm releasing this video, and I wanted to take a look at these guys. And these little yellow ones here are growing some gray feathers in. This white one, right, or this yellow one right here is gonna be solid white. And then we got our little brown one. These things have doubled in size. They're so, so cool to watch. I mean, super cool little birds, and I cannot wait until these things grow up. But these things look amazing and they're doing fantastic. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't think about button quail before now. I wish I would have because these button quail are absolutely amazing. And I'm definitely going to hatch these things again. Let me know what you think about that idea down below in the comments. Also, make sure you let me know what you think we should name these little guys. We are gonna build them an outdoor aviary come springtime. We're gonna keep these things in the house, but I'd like to have all kinds of things in the backyard and we're gonna start building that stuff out. We have quite a bit of space back there and I, I really wanna start getting more animals and things like that. So make sure you drop a comment below and let me know what you think we should get, as well as make sure you let me know what we, what we should name these things. So with that guys, I really appreciate this. Oh, Sheila in a promiscuous situation on the back of my jeep. Really, Sheila? Come on, man. Make sure you comment below and let me know names for these things. And uh, I really appreciate the support, guys. Thank you so very much for coming along on this journey with us. We are truly grateful. The CSBrand.com is going to be released very soon. So make sure if you have not entered to win a piece of merch by simply visiting thecsbrand.com and entering your email address in the middle of the page. Right before the launch of this, I'm going to pick one random winner out of this particular list of email addresses to send a free piece of merchandise to. So make sure you go ahead and enter now. Also, make sure you follow us on Instagram, Facebook. Links to all are below. Our P.O. box, our phone number, all that stuff is below. So check all that stuff out. And with all that, guys, thank you so very much. And we will see you next time.